audio, take one. Hey, um, where'd you get coffee at? What do you mean? Coffee. I, I brought it. Did you bring me coffee? No. Did you show it But why do you need bread? Hey, bread. You got bread? Welcome to the Jumpstart Podcast, where we provide the ammunition to blow your mind in children's ministry. I'm Dan Matier. I'm Brent Colby. Today we're talking about events in children's ministry. This is episode 15 of the Jumpstart Podcast. We're excited to bring it to you today, again, live in video. For all of our audio listeners, you are receiving the episodes just like normal, but no, you can visit cmjumpstart.com to see all of the content that we're highlighting here in live, full-color video. Or you could even subs- use that uh, website to subscribe to the video feed if you want to subscribe to that instead of the audio. Yeah, awesome. And personally, I'm a big audio guy. I listen to audio while I'm driving all the time, so I'd probably prefer the audio on yeah, a subscription a little more, basis. A little more flexible, but definitely check out the video because we have some very visual stuff we're going to be showing. Yeah, exactly. For example, like uh, I just want to share some stuff that I've been reading lately. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm going back to school. I'm reading a lot. I'm doing a, something that I had never really done before, a book in a day. You ever do that, like a book in one day? Yeah. That's, that's a tough day. Yeah, that's but, a uh, tough day. But I've been reading this one. I'm, Kindle's on my Christmas list here. So uh, <laughs> and this is called The Shape of Things to Come. It's okay. a book. It was written about 10 years ago by uh, Michael Frost and Alan Hirsch. Interesting read because it's a book about the future of church ministry. Okay. But it was written 10 years ago. So it's like we are in the future. And it was interesting that some of the, the places that they thought that uh, uh, church would go, Maybe, I don't know if they call it necessarily right, and then some of the things that happened, uh, you know, didn't... Anyway, it's like we're living in the okay. future. It's interesting. Did they predict hoverboards? Uh, <laughs> no. Flying you're cars. Of, you're thinking of Back to the Future there, <laughs> but Does Pepsi own all the church corporations? <laughs> none, of those, none of those were part of their predictions? What are you reading these days, Brent? <laughs> I am re- actually, I'm reading a book that uh, is... Something I've really been loving. I just finished it. It's called The Last Lion. It's a biography on Winston Churchill. I'm, I'm guessing you didn't do this one in a day. No, I did not do this one yeah, in a day. In that's fact, a hefty it, uh, it peaks out around 1,000 pages. The exciting part about this book was, one, it was excellent. But I was getting about to this point, and I'm realizing, like, we're not even close to World War II yet. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked on it, and I realized this is volume one. Oh, no. So um, there's volume one. Hold okay. on that. And here is uh, volume two. Yikes. That. I'm about a third of the way through this one right now. And then we get to um, the title, the last line, which is the title uh, one for the episode. So there's volume three. So... I, okay. plan, I plan to read all three of them. Um, probably one of the biggest literary uh, uh, goals I've had before. I'm getting sore just holding <laughs> It's so. about 3,000 pages on the line. Nice. But it is fascinating. Here's a guy who was eccentric, crazy. I mean, you want to talk about leadership principles and leadership, like, things not to do. Yeah. The life of Winston Churchill is just not only a fascinating time in history, but the model he sets, just it's beyond interesting. I really yeah. love it. Yeah. Well, we do want to talk about leadership, and specifically children's ministry leadership. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, event planning, something we all do in children's ministry. Uh, Brent, you got an interview for us, right? I did. I had a chance to talk with Mark Etzminger about events. And what I want to do right now is show you just maybe the opening line of our conversation. Okay. So, Hey, I'm here with Mark Etzminger. He's the Senior Director of Children's Ministries for the Sims of God, and he has been visiting us today from Springfield, Missouri. Mark, thanks for being with us. Absolutely. We thought while we had you here, we could just pick your brain about events. I know um, events are something on the minds of children's leaders all year long, and we want to find the best ways to do those. What are some ways that you found just to keep those events in focus? Because sometimes the event just overtakes us. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes what ends up happening is we... We, one, we can follow on tradition, and well, we've always done this event, we always need to do this event, whether yeah. it's on a holiday or just a, a traditional time that your church has done one. And so we do the event, and we can do it with a lot of excellence, but sometimes if we, if we don't remember what the purpose is, we end up doing an event, and in the end, we're frustrated with the results. So the most important thing that we do is we, we always have to start with a reminder or the asking the question of, why are we doing this event? Yeah. What's the purpose for this? And, and I don't know that there's a right or wrong answer, um, because every church... Okay, I want to pause it right there. Yeah. So 
a question Mark gives us right at the beginning is to ask, why are we doing this event? Now, we had a great discussion on special events in ministry. We talked about a variety of things. In fact, we're going to be posting that interview next week on cmjumpstart.com so you can see it in its entirety. But we thought today would be a good spot to just jump off in our discussion of this. So, Dan, yeah. when you do events, how do you answer that question, um, why am I doing this event or what do you aim at to you know when you start yeah you know that's a, a great question I like what, what Mark said because you do need to start with why but I think a, a, a similar question there something that has to go with that is what what is success yeah. because if you could say why are we doing this event you could say well the why is to reach out into our community and bring present the gospel or, or the why is to uh, build community uh, among our members but but then you're faced with the question, how do we know if we did that? Which can be a tough thing yeah. with events. The easiest thing to do is to count the people because people are easy to count. And I think that there's a lot of reason why we do that. Right, right. Um, that's one. Yeah, I think just evaluating it, it becomes crucial when you're trying to measure some success. Yeah. I mean, other than going to your lead pastor and be like, hey, we had a thousand kids at our yeah. thing or a hundred kids at our thing. It was awesome. Um, that's just one metric. I mean, that's, yeah. I, I think some people capitalize on that and they make a whole ministry, they develop entire ministries around getting people in the door. Right. Um, but obviously we're doing much more than just attracting people. We really want to get depth. We want to elicit some sort of response from these people. Mm -hmm. So one thing for me, like when we talk about the why, why are we going to do it? What does success look like? Before we even begin, I, I always find it's super important to make sure that you have a target audience in mind. Mm -hmm. Who is coming to the event? Yeah. Um, the who and the why, why are we doing this event, who, who is the event, those two, you know, they, not one necessarily comes before the other because they inform each other. Right. I think of different types of events in ministries. Uh, obviously, you, we'll do a bunch of outreach events, but sometimes we're doing just a community event. Yeah. And having yeah. a clear description of which one we're tackling, I think, really helps you make a lot of decisions down the road about yeah. what to do next. You know, I was talking to a children's pastor who did a Halloween event. A lot of churches do a Halloween right. event. But but this children's pastor was telling me she had a, a parent co-op at her church, which really encouraged parents to get involved. The only kids who were even invited to this Halloween event were the children of the parent co-op. <laughs> totally revolutionary in, in terms of purpose, but, but super purposeful in terms of that's why we're doing this event. So when she measured numbers, those were meaningful numbers because it was like every one of those kids means parents who are serving right so reward. it was there's was no overt outreach to that event it was no. just to the people yeah. in her community yeah and i think honestly from my perspective doing events like that can help you solidify the events that are outreach because yeah. every event you do is just to get more people at your church you can lose focus we had a similar experience uh, in a ministry as a part of talking about our church picnic is this uh, an event that's for our, our small groups, for our, our church community, or is this like an invite your neighbor event? Yeah. And around the table, now this is an event that had happened year after year after year after year without asking some of these questions. And around that table, there were some that thought, well, this is a small group picnic where people have a picnic. And there's other people thought, oh, this is like an invite event yeah. where we're in, are inviting our neighbors to this. And other people were like, I thought this was just a church community mm -hmm. event. And so uh, everyone was looking at it from a different angle, yeah. and it really muddied the water about why and the who. Yeah. And so determining whether or not was it, that event was a success, it would have been impossible unless we clarified those specific yeah. things. And that can be frustrating and disappointing. <laughs> oh yes. So getting some getting some standards of what do what specifically do we want to accomplish, and being realistic about did we accomplish that? What are some types of events that you guys have hosted? We, we've mentioned two, like community events. I mean, maybe you can help us be more specific about types of community events, yeah. and even outreach events. What are some ways that your church is, has taken those on? Yeah, you know, uh, one thing that we've done recently that was neither, it wasn't a community or really an outreach, but a service event. We just recently, um, just before Thanksgiving, did a service event where we invited people in and we gave away turkeys and things like that. And that was uh, exciting because the purpose was so clear, that our purpose was to bless people in the community, to, to be a, a hand to say, here's some food on Thanksgiving if you're maybe, maybe not able to afford this. Um, and I think it served an outreach purpose. It served a community purpose. There was a lot of residual effect, but the purpose was we're just here to serve. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Is it okay to do a church event without having an altar call? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. In fact, I uh, have always tried to be sensitive that we don't bait and switch people. 
right. that, uh, that when we do our Easter egg hunt, we're not going to lock the doors and say, <laughs> nobody's leaving until you've heard the message of the gospel. I think yeah. people need to know what they're, what they're getting just to build trust. Do, is, that a hard, is that ever a hard sell for you? I know for me it has been where I say, we're doing this event and the main goal is to have fun. Yeah. A movie night or something like this, there's always someone that feels like you have to have some sort of altar or or like yeah. some sort of like gospel affiliation with it. Right. Do you ever push do you ever have people pushing back on that in your ministry? You know, I think there are but but I try to be for me I try to be intentional about talking about why we do the event in the first place. Right. And and we call out those events where we don't present the gospel a bridge event. Yeah. And I just say, "Hey, you know what? Our our goal is not met if people come to church one time." In fact, our goal is not even met if somebody says, raises their hands or says a prayer. Our goal is a lifelong journey to become like Christ, a lifelong journey in a body of faith. And you can't do that in one day. Right. So when we have a, an event, a kid's event, where people just come in, they build friendships, they build relationships, that's part of the journey. And yeah. I try not to make that just cute and a flippant thing we say, but, but really the truth. Right. I don't right. know. Have you had to justify that with your... Sometimes I feel like um, one instance, well... The Halloween event, you know, with our kids, that we had big carnivals and we did like a trunk or treat. We tried a, a bunch of different things. Yeah. And one church I was a part of, we actually were wrestling with it. Well, what's what's the win? What's the takeaway? And we couldn't really clearly articulate it. And so after wrestling with it for several months, we said, let's not do an event. In fact, let's encourage people instead of coming into a church event to actually be home on a time, yeah. the only time in our culture all year round where your neighbor will come over and knock right. on your door is Halloween. Right. So isn't it a shame if we're all not home yeah. on this night? And so um, now you could argue that. you could. I think there's lots of ways you can approach Halloween yeah. um, as a cultural way to connect with people. But our church, for the time we're at, we said, yeah, let's do that. So yeah. we did nothing on Halloween. Yeah. We actually collected candy for a month. And then people who wanted to be home to receive candy would just go to the front office and they'd pick up candy so yeah. that they could have people at their wow. house. Wow, yeah. that's great. That, that's, and a great feeling to purposefully cancel something. Yeah, it was, <laughs> that did feel good. Yeah, good. So I, good. we'd love to hear different theories or things that you guys have done in regards to special events. Yeah, or stop doing. Or stop doing, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's always interesting to see. And, of course, they can email us at? cmjumpstart at gmail.com. That's right. Switching gears. <laughs> That's Cal do it early there. Yep. So switching gears a little bit, I had a chance to look at some curriculum this week, and I wanted to just give you a quick shot. It's called um, Faith Case. I don't know. Have you used Faith Case? Before? I have used Faith Case. Yeah, I've not used the one, the, the unit we're looking at here, but I've used it. Great videos, great stuff. It's it's well put together. Let's take a quick look at Faith Case in this in this specific series. It's called Armor of God. Yeah. Today we're taking a look at Faith Case, Armor of God. This is an immersive 10-part series on Ephesians chapter 6 where kids learn how to put on God's armor. Children will explore what it means to equip virtues of truth, righteousness, readiness, faith, salvation, God's word, and spirit. The whole curriculum takes place on a secret agent motif. Kids gather top secret information from the commissioner and set off on a weekly adventure to kind of crack the case. So... In a nutshell, that kind of sums up the feel of Faith Case. You're a secret agent. Uh, you, you, the kids are exploring. They're doing this whole kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Which um, my kids really love. They really love to be in the seat of the, the spy, the secret agent. <laughs> it was cool. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your experience using it. Yeah. You know, the, the unit I did was on foundations of faith. And it was well put together in a sense that we talked about themes and words that we wanted every Christian to know, but it's hard to talk about with kids, like sanctification. I mean, that was one of the days was on sanctification, right? right. Now, you want Christians to understand that, so why wouldn't we teach kids? But we usually don't. So they, they weren't afraid to tackle some, some weighty stuff. Yeah. So I happen to have the faith case we reviewed right here. Do you want to, would you mind just kind of peeking inside there? It's a, okay. It's a cool briefcase thing to start with. That's cool. We've used it uh, once before. We used it in a Wednesday night setting, and all the media and stuff is built in. One thing I really liked about it, the format of it, was the play between the video and the speaker up front. A lot of times it's just a sit and watch sort of thing. Yeah. But they've actually uh, organized their DVDs in a way that you will click through the DVD line by line, and then each line of that DVD, it may just be a picture mm -hmm. as the next chapter in yeah. the DVD yeah. menu. And it makes more some of the more 
naive kids think that they're, they're, the video lady's really talking to you. <laughs> and you're you're pulled into the story. Yeah, ministry to naive kids. It's always a, it's always a, an interesting niche. They're great there. below. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, one thing we want to do, we want to give away this exact faith case to one of you. So. We will select someone at random who leaves either a comment on our video online at cmjumpstart.com or a comment on our YouTube feed. Again, that's at cmjumpstart. We just love to give it away to somebody. So uh, write down, what should we have them write down? A comment wise, this be good. You know what? Maybe uh, write down the, the uh, last event that worked for you or the last event that you canceled. That's right. Just an event title. Last event that worked for you or on the other end of the thing, last event that you canceled, did yeah. away with. It'd be interesting sure. to hear your thoughts there. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's almost Christmas. Uh, this is a December episode. As long as we're on the subject of events, what have you done for Christmas? I mean, maybe people are still trying to put together some last minute ideas. Yeah. One thing we've done at Christmas that I always loved it was that we would cancel Sunday school, Sunday church, all that stuff for the kids. Yeah. And I loved it, not because I had a Sunday off. In fact, it was actually more work because what we did was we created kind of a family vibe for mm. that Sunday. In fact, we would do it those two Sundays, the Sunday of Christmas and the Sunday of New Year's. Uh, part of it, it was a challenge with our volunteers. They're gone. They're visiting family. Yeah. The community that our church was in, we had a lot of grandmas and grandpas who were our, the base of our team, and they would go. And so um, it was a challenge volunteer-wise, but it was also a great opportunity to kind of present a family front to our church yeah. body. So um, I would typically get up and read some sort of Christmas story or some sort of event with the kids. And... If you ever have a chance to get your kids up front in a church service, it is always a win. I mean, Absolutely. always a win. Absolutely. Uh, so we'd have them come up. I'd read stories. We'd always make booklets and things like that for the kids to keep them, you know, keep them interested That's in the great. service. Uh, what are some things you guys have done? Yeah, you know, well, I'm really excited because this week we're actually trying out a brand new event. Other churches have done this, but this is our first uh, time to try it. We're doing a family gingerbread house making night. Ooh. Just inviting people in. And this is one of those where it's a very much a community building event. That's yeah. the purpose of it. They're just making gingerbread houses, talking, sharing, and, and having some fun together. Yeah. So I'm hoping it goes well. It's interesting. I've seen candy cane hunts. A church I was at had oh, a candy yeah. cane hunt for a while. Um, Instead of Easter egg hunt, they do a candy cane hunt. Yeah, they did both. They did, lot, they did lots of hunting in that church. Hey, did, uh, you know. Uh, you got the format down, right? <laughs> That's a great idea, though. Candy cane hunt. Yeah, so uh, there's lots of ways to do stuff. So it'll be interesting to, yeah. to kind of hear what people are up to. Yeah, and include your suggestions at cmjumpstart.com. We'd love to share them. So, Dan, that kind of wraps up episode 15. Yeah. It was uh, good. So we want to give away this faith case, so make sure you leave a comment either on the website or on our YouTube channel. Also, uh, Check out the videos, too. When they were posted next week, that interview with Mark is really good. That's right. We're going to post the full interview and also the full review of the faith case. So, um, again, leave comments anywhere. We'll, we'll pick a random user, generator, mechanic, robot to find our winner next week. We'll let you know who gets to take that home, too. Sweet. All right. We'll see you next episode. Sink. 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 What did it say? Sink. It's like if anything is possible, then how can I find a floor? If everything's impossible, then what's right out that door? And how can I get you to see that I want to more? I know it's not about me.